All right, friends, this isn't going to be a really glamorous video, but it's functional and useful, sort of like a toilet. In fact, the toilet is leaking around the wax ring on the bottom, between the floor and the bowl. So we're going to show you today how to replace a wax ring on a toilet. And the first thing we need to do is to get the water out of it. And it's a couple of steps involved in that. And the first step is going to be shutting the water supply off to the tank, which almost always there's going to be a valve between the floor and the tank that you're going to turn and shut off. Sometimes you might have to go to the basement to get to the shut off, but most of them are right here. So once we get that shut off, we're going to flush the toilet and wait for it to go down. Once that's down, we're going to grab this valve here the flush valve, and we're going to hold it down, so you can hear all the rest of the water that's in the tank flowing out into the bowl. So we're just going to hold this down until all the water in the bowl or tank empties out. Once the water in the tank empties out, we're going to take a wrench, and I just use usually an adjustable crescent type wrench, and we're going to remove the water line. You can either remove it down here at the top of the valve, or you can remove it right here, this big plastic ring, which is easier to do. It's usually only hand tight. So we're just going to unscrew that. And we're going to move the toilet paper back out of the way so we don't want any of that to get wet. We're going to put a towel down here on the floor because there's every time you take that line off, there's going to be a little bit of water drain out of it from the valve mechanism and such. So we're just going to take that off. Like that, and it's just, just a little bit, maybe an ounce of water came running out of there. All right, the next step is to remove the flange mounts. And usually they have some sort of decorative cap over the top. And if we look down here, we can see there's the bolt that goes down through the flange that's mounted to the floor. And we can remove the nut on top of that using either a socket wrench or our handy little crescent wrench here. Let's see if we can get a video of that while we're doing it. All right, I used the wrench and I got the other mounting nut off. So the toilet's actually all loose right now and ready to come up off the floor. But there's still a few more things we need to do to make it a safe project. First, we're gonna remove all the accumulated brick brack on top of the toilet tank. And we're gonna remove the lid and set the lid aside so it doesn't get damaged or broke while you're moving everything around. This isn't a required step, but it certainly saves you a lot of mess and trouble, is to remove the excess water from the bowl. You know, the bowl holds a certain amount of water. <clears throat> I'd say probably close to a quart. And we need to get that out of there so it doesn't splash all over as we're picking up the toilet and manipulating it around. We have to actually lay the toilet up on its side or down flat on its back in order to get to the bottom of it and replace the ring. So what I like to do, some people will take a little cup, a paper cup, a Dixie cup or something, and they'll cup the water out a little bit at a time. But what I usually do is I take a plunger and I put the plunger in there and I just, every time you push down the plunger, it forces some of the water out. Now, of course, you probably want to wear a mask and gloves and any appropriate <clears throat> sanitary equipment you deem necessary for this sort of project. Now, the next step I'm not going to be able to show you without a tripod set up for the camera man, but I'll show you what we're going to do. We're going to stand in front of the toilet, bend over, and we're going to grasp it right, the center of balance on these is usually right here by the mount for the seat. So if we grab it on either side here, I think I have a pair of gloves in my pocket here, right here, we can lift it straight up and set it aside. Then I'm going to stretch out a towel on the floor to set it on to keep it from getting chipped or any little bit of water that's still in it from leaking out and going all over. Oh, I can see here, and you can see too, the last time I changed this flange gasket, or wax ring as it's called, I didn't use a wax ring. I used a blue neoprene ring. And apparently it's not sealing as good as it used to. So we got a new ring we're going to put on. And we're going to have to make sure the flange down here, where's the flange, right there, is really clean in order to get this new ring to stick on there. And today we're going to be using this 
different type of flange. Instead of the soft neoprene or the wax, I'm using this semi-hard plastic hard rubber. It's like really thick and hard rubber. And it has little barbed grooves on the spout that goes down into the drain hole to provide a nice tight seal so that any fluid that might back up doesn't leak out around it and come back up to the floor. Now it looks like a really good design. And this was about six fifty at Orr's Hardware in North Branch, which wax-free toilet seal. And it shows you there with it mounting to the shows right there how you mount it to the bottom of the toilet. It has like an epoxy glue material that activates once you pull the paper cover off of it. There we go. And it fits right down inside the floor flange and right down into the drain pipe. So it provides a nice tight seal. The gloves I had on. Now we're just going to carefully peel that seal back. You can see there's a nice glue material on there. Oh, we can probably see it better once we get it off. There we go. Look at this. A nice soft glue material. And we're not going to touch it. We're just going to take it and put it right over the ring. The flange it goes over and there it is in my hand and now we're gonna stick it into place and wiggle it just a little press it down tight all the way around it feels really tight on there there it is mounted in place all right now you can see the mounting bolt sticking up through the floor that i talked about and we're gonna go ahead and clean this floor up a little bit more now that we've sanitized it with some bleach water we're going to clean that floor up a little more and then we're going to lift the toilet up and set it down so that the whole bolts you see come up through those holes in the base of the toilet. Once we get the toilet set in place, we will reinstall the plastic washer, the steel washer and the 7 16 nut on top and tighten it down. It's important to put weight on the toilet bowl and make sure it's flush to the floor before you tighten. That way you won't have to worry about it going off center, becoming crooked or mounted the wrong way. Also, pay attention to the back wall to make sure that the toilet is mounted square to the wall and not off on an angle. Because there's adjustments in the floor mount that let you pivot the toilet from side to side. Same thing on the other side. And then we're going to tighten them up. A little bit at a time on each side so you have like an even tightening going down like four or five turns on one side four or five on the other side and you don't want to wrench down on it really tight when you get all done because if you go too tight it's very easy to crack the mounting plate that goes on the floor we've gotten it done we've reattached the line already I just did that those kind of lines on there just hand tighten and now we're going to oh slippery floor oh dangerous Get that towel and get this cleaned up. We're going to open the valve and let the water come back into the tank. Here we go. And that only took about a half hour. And now we have a new floor flange or a donut gasket, I guess we'll call it. I'd like to call it a wax ring, but it's not really wax. So sanitize the floor, sanitize the bowl, sanitize my hands, and we'll be good to go. And I don't think I showed you the ring. Did I show you the ring once I took it off? It's kind of nasty, but we're going to show it to you anyway. All right, there's the ring that came off. And you can see there's actually a distorted spot in it on one side. And that could very well be where it was leaking. So, there you go. This is a do-it-yourself product. It cost me less than $7 for the part at the hardware store. It would have easily cost you $150 to $200 to have a plumber come out and do this. And... You have the satisfaction of knowing you did it yourself, as long as you're not too disgusted by having to do it yourself. But there you go. A little instructional video for today. Have a great day. Thanks for watching.